We've talked about volume of rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, prisms of all kinds of shape. In fact, we've talked about circular prisms, right? Cylinders. So let's move on. Let's talk about more uh, interesting shapes. So we've got volume of spears. We've got pyramids and some cones. Um, now, as we go through these, I'm just really going to give you a definition of something, of one of these shapes that I'd like you to write down in your notes. I'm going to give you the equation. And then at the end, I will give you a couple of links that will give you some uh, information about how these formulas are created, these equations to find volume are uh, um, made. And I'd like you to take a look at it. I don't necessarily expect you to have a, a full understanding of it, um, but I would like you to sort of just get an idea of how people came up with these ideas. Um, they're pretty intense. Uh, again, I don't expect you to be able to reproduce them. I just want you to be able to use them right now, but I feel like it's sort of cheating uh, if I don't give you an opportunity to um, figure out or be, you know, have an opportunity for me to explain uh, how these are derived. Um, I think it doesn't mean quite as much if you don't know where they come from or why they work. So I will give you an opportunity at the end because other people can explain it much better than I can. Um, all right, so let's first talk about. First, we have a sphere. Okay, a sphere is a three-dimensional object shaped like, shaped like a ball. Um, the Earth would be an example of one. Although, if you took the Earth and you shrunk it down into the size of a, uh, you know, like a BB or like a small pellet, uh, small round object, it would be much bumpier than the spheres. I'm sorry, it would be much smoother than a sphere that we have today. So, um, but most importantly, the volume of a sphere is four thirds times pi times radius cubed, right? And the radius is the middle, right? The middle point of the sphere to the outer edge. And it's the same in any location anywhere out through the sphere. So you can kind of think of it as a, you start with a circle, right? You take a circle with a point <clears throat> and you put, kick it out to the side there. And from there you rotate it, okay? So it's sort of like you'd rotate it maybe around the diameter of this circle, right? So if I extend the radius this way as well, and if I were to spin, okay, this circle, right? Sort of like if you think about holding a dime in your hand on either end, and you'd rotate it by hitting this at the edge of it, okay? That's <clears throat> sort of what that looks like. And I have uh, a graphic here. Let me show it to you. So these were some interesting... Um, circle shapes that I thought I'd found uh, that I share, share with you about um, different, this is actually talking about momentum and inertia, which is something you'll talk about more when you take physics at some point. But right here is the main one I wanted to look at, and this is how you create a sphere, right? You take a disc and you sort of rotate it around its diameter and you end up with a, uh, a sphere, which would look like this, which is rotating around an axis, which is, you know, if you could see sort of the, the benefit of this since our planet, you know, planet Earth where we all live, is rotating around an axis, right? And once it makes one full revolution or one rotation there, it actually is one day of the year. Um, yeah, one day, okay? 24 hours. All right, I digress. So let's get back. And <clears throat> so this is the volume of a sphere. Let's go ahead and practice it. Um, I think you can probably do this on your own. I don't think you need a whole lot of uh, examples here. So why don't you just give a shot here and see. First thing I want you to do is, again, I want you to write this thing in terms of pi, no rounding. And so let's see if you can uh, go ahead and do that. All right, try it. Go. All right, so to do this one, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to fill in the missing pieces, right? So I have 4 thirds times pi times the radius, which in this case is 14, and we're going to cube that, okay? Which means 14 times 14 times 14, all right? Now I'm going to use a calculator to uh, <clears throat> figure this out. So what I'm going to do is, if I divide this thing by 3, in fact, let's do this. You're going to do 14 times 14 times 14, and then I'm going to multiply it by 4 thirds. So I'm going to multiply it times 4, right? Which is going to give me 10,976, and I'm going to divide it by 3. And when I do this, I'm ending up with a repeating decimal. Well, I don't want a repeating decimal because then I'm going to have to round it. So let's multiply this thing back by 3 and get our original answer. And what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our problem here, or our answer using a fraction. So it's going to be 10,000, what was it? 10,976 pi. And this whole thing is going to be divided by 3. Okay? So that's my actual answer here. And it's going to be cubic 
centimeters, okay? And a cubic centimeter is really just a milliliter, okay? As we learned before. And so what this thing is, is 10,976 times pi, and then we're going to divide it by 3, and it's going to be cubic centimeters. Well, if I look at this, pi is a little more than 3, and I'm going to divide this by 3. So once I actually calculate this and multiply it with pi, I should end up with something slightly below this. I'm going to say maybe around 10,500, 10,600, something like that, because this is 3.14. Right? So if I divide <coughs> 3.14 and 3, I'm going to get a little bit more than uh, 1. Oh, so no, sorry. This should be a little bit higher. So I should maybe like 11,200, 11,300, something like that. Okay? So let's go ahead and calculate it out. So I've got 10,796. We're going to multiply that by pi. Okay? And then we're going to divide this by 3. And I end up with 11,494, okay? So my actual volume is 11,494, and we'll say 0 .04. So the volume is 11,494, 494.04 cubic centimeters, okay? I'm going to put my comma in here to make it separated. So we know that there's about 11,400, we'll say about 11,500 cubic centimeters in here, which 11,500 would be, what, about 11.5 liters, right? Because if this is a, a milliliter, 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So inside of that sphere right there with a 14 centimeter radius, we're going to end up with a volume of about 11 and a half liters, okay? So... Let's go ahead and we'll move on and get to the next uh, next shape. So let's move on to a pyramid. Okay, pyramid is going to have a uh, base of some side. It has to be at least a triangular base, um, and then it has some sort of vertex up at the top, right? A vertex up at the top, where each corner, right, each edge, right, leads up to there. So it creates triangular edges that all meet up at a certain point. Okay, and the base can be anything. It could be a square. It could be a triangle. It could be a trapezoid, it could be, you know, any of these, any of those uh, shapes. So the general formula for these is going to be the area of the base times the height divided by three. And so, or one third of that. And sometimes what you'll do is you'll see it done as this, base times height divided by three, okay? Which, which really means the same thing. Take the base times height divided by three or multiply it by a third. Same idea, okay? So, um, the way that this formula is derived, there's a couple of different ways that are pretty interesting and different. Um, and I'll put a couple links on the end of this video so that you can go take a look and check it out. And I really encourage you to do that. I think, um, again, I don't expect you to know how to do all that math, but I think it gives you a little bit of an introduction to sort of how people have used math in the past. And you know, this is a pretty, uh, pretty amazing formula. It's kind of an amazing thing that happens. So I just want you to take a look at it and check it out so um, but up until then let's go ahead and let's practice using it okay so here I give you a very basic pyramid it's a square pyramid bottom go ahead you try to find the volume of this pyramid okay all right well, hopefully you had a chance to do that let me jump back to this page real quick and I'm gonna copy um, let me copy this formula and then we'll paste it on in here and so we have volume is one-third of the area of the base times height. So in this case, we have one-third of, well, the base here, right, is a square, okay, 8 times 8. So we're going to get 8 squared multiplied by the height, which is 9, okay? And we're going to use this idea to, and we'll just go ahead and simplify. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out, and we'll do this. We'll do 64, and we'll do 64 times 9. Okay, so we got 64 times 9, which is equal to 576. Okay, and then we'll take 576, and actually, you know what? I should have done ahead of time. Let's do this. We'll do one-third of 9. So one-third of 9 is going to give me 3. So then we get 64 times 3, which should be, I think, 196. Um, so let's go ahead and divide by 3, and we got, oh, 192, okay? So we've got 192, and let's look, and this is centimeters, okay? So this would be centimeters cubed, or cubic centimeters, which means inside of this it would fit 192 uh, milliliters. All right, there you have it. That was pyramid. Let's move on. Next step.
we have a cone, okay? And the cone is the same idea. You have a circle, all right? Um, circle base, and then you put a point somewhere up at the top, right? Somewhere up at the top, and we'll call this, uh, you know, the vertex, and then you just match all of the uh, edges of the cone, right? Come up to, or the circle, all the edges there, the, the circumference here, and you bring it up to meet at a... Um, a point, a vertex, okay? Now, if the uh, vertex is directly over the center, meaning straight over it, okay? It's called a right cone, meaning that this here is a right angle, all right? If it's not, then we call it an oblique uh, cone, which means like, you know, you might have a circular base, okay? And you might have a conical edge here, right? So then, right, it sort of comes up to the side, all right? So it's not a right cone, it would be a an oblique cone, okay? So, um, and notice I use that word conical. Conical implies that it's of a, uh, of a cone shape. Okay, so you might say like a party hat is a is conical. Okay, so if you have you know you could say put a strap on here. Okay, and then you put it on a smiling, laughing kid at a birthday party eating cake. All right, so here you go. Here's a cone. Why don't you go ahead? You try figuring out the um, the volume of this cone. Go. All right, let's go ahead. In this case, uh, again, volume is going to be one-third the base of the height, so we'll do one-third. Well, you know what? Let's do it this way. Um, let's use base times height over three, so you get a use of it, okay? So the base of this is going to be this circle here, okay? So the area of the circle is going to be pi, okay, times the radius, which is five squared, and then we'll multiply that by the height, which here is 13, and then that whole thing gets divided by 3. So we know that the volume is going to be equal to um, something times pi. So it's 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 13 is 325. So 325 divided by 3, okay? And 325 is not divisible by 3, so this is our non rounded answer, okay? Now there's two reasons why this is gonna be more accurate, a cleaner answer here. One is because we didn't multiply by pi. The other is because we didn't divide by three, okay? Because dividing by three is gonna give us some decimal, a repeating decimal, and we're gonna have to round that, and we're gonna try to avoid any kind of rounding until the very end. And we're at that very end, so let's go ahead and actually multiply this out. So we're gonna get 325, and we're gonna multiply that by pi, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by 3, and we're going to end up with 340.339204, so let's round it to the hundredth, and we'll say 340.34 cubic centimeters, okay? So let's try it. Let's look one more time. 330.34, okay? So that means that this cone here is has a volume of 330, about 340.34 cubic uh, centimeters, which again is would be about 340 milliliters, okay? Uh, and to give that a little bit of a context, a 12 ounce can of, of uh, Coke, I believe is 330 or maybe 330, uh, 334, something like that, uh, milliliters, so. All right. I thought this was kind of fun. Um, who doesn't like ice cream? There's an old saying or old song, you scream ice cream, we all scream for ice cream. Um, and this is from Garfield. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. I thought that was pretty funny. So here's here it is. Here's your hot day. Here's your ice cream cone. I want you to tell me how much ice cream will you eat? All right. So try to br bring this with you to class, and uh, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it there. Uh, and I have another fun activity I think that we do for the next couple days, which will give a shed a little more light into this and a little bit of statistics as well. So good luck.